This time on Graveyard Cars, Mark teaches Alyssa to document and prep three cars for disassembly. The team installs the 400 Magnum and the 1972 Dodge Charger, and Alyssa commits a crime that Mark may never forgive on this episode of Graveyard Cars. In case you missed it, we started working on Mr. Bill Goldberg's 1968 GTX 444 speed car. I did the body and prep work on the deck lid for the V-Code Challenger. Will did a phenomenal job prepping and painting the 1967 Hemi GTX convertible. And Will and I faced off mano a mano Top Gun contest to see who was the best painter. This is the time of year that we always go out and start looking for our new projects for next season and next year. I sent Mike over to Bend to pick up our next one, which is a 1970 Plymouth Roadrunner, 383 four-speed lemon twist yellow. What makes this little car cool is it's an identical twin, option-wise, to the one that the guy who has it now had in high school and had to sell because the family always gets in the way. And now it's his time to relive his childhood. As soon as Mike gets back with the Roadrunner, uh, I want to get Alyssa, move the car inside, and do an inventory with her. This is a great opportunity for her to learn the VIN numbers, what should match, what shouldn't match, what a good car is to start with, and what isn't a good car. So these are the things I'm doing to acclimate her with the business. Uh, it's also one of the things that we do on every single car before it gets disassembled and sent off to the Media Blaster. Hello. Hey. Put, put this one under Smith. He just traded that in. Oh, That's the title, so keep it in the pile. Had a guy call me up wanting to do a restoration on a 69 Roadrunner. He wanted to use the 2008 Challenger as a down payment for the restoration. Uh, they're cool cars. I love them. Uh, so I'm more than happy to make that deal go together. This particular car has 697 original one owner miles. So the guy that has the Roadrunner that we're now restoring, he bought that car brand new. It's never seen rain. It's never been driven in the rain. It's always been garage kept. It is a mint condition 2008 Challenger SRT8. Oh my gosh, wait, he so. Hold on. Wait, so That's, whose car is this? It, it's mine now. It's your car? This is here? I didn't see it get delivered. No, it's out on the side of the building. I can't believe we have this. This is beautiful. Uh huh, isn't that gorgeous? Hemi. Uh huh. Brand it's, a, it's an SRT8. <clears throat> it's, it's a nice car. Let's go drive it. <laughs> Come on. Hey, no, seriously, you gotta quit smoking that stuff. It's gonna kill you. What are you? My dad let me drive his car before, but it's not a Hemi. So, and I never really, really drove it. I just kind of run errands around for him. So I would love to drive a car that's this fast. Just register the car. You ain't driving it. Have a nice day. What we're doing right now is, uh, this is Darren's old car. Um, once he left the show, he wanted to sell his car. I found a buyer for it. Uh, the buyer's on the East Coast. He's motivated to actually finish the car, so um, that's what we're doing right now is getting ready to do the disassembly on it. We, uh, the motor's rebuilt, but we've got to take it over to the engine stand, disassemble it because it's probably got contaminants in it, tear it down, clean it. Uh, but a lot of work has been done drivetrain-wise, so we're going to preserve that. But the body really needs to be re-stripped and gone back through again. So that's what we're getting ready to do right now. Get a little spillage going here. Uh, you able to get one? All right. Uh, I think while the radiator's draining, I'll uh, get as much stuff off of there as I can and then pop it out of there. Mike's working on the control arms and won't take us too long. We'll have this baby all blown apart here. About got the radiator out. Yeah, what's going on there? Well, that's not even bolted in. It's just got one bolt in it. Ha! Guy's got one bolt in the steering column. Oh, really? <laughs> the whole bolt. One whole bolt holding Yeehaw, it together. Yeah. yeah, that's my boy. That's my butcher. Is the Detroit joint connected up there? The knuckle? Uh, yeah. Has it got the pin in it? Turn it. Uh, no. Okay. Almost there. Oh. 
There you go, sir. Nice. Uh, this, this, it's a really cool car. I mean, no matter how you slice it, this is one of 916 1970 Dodge Challenger RTs. It's a 440, 375 horse, U-code, four barrel car, four speed, 354 Dana, which is A33 track pack. It's FC7 Plum Crazy, white longitudinal stripe, black vinyl top, no hood blackout, no V21 on the hood, and uh, no spoiler. So the car's gonna be stunning when it's finished. It's gonna be a lot like our uh, purple six pack car as far as just in your face right now colors. I, I'm actually looking forward to seeing it. And really, I'm looking very forward to seeing it done. It's done its time in purgatory. Its previous owner didn't give enough of a care about it to put it together and, and spend the time and the money it takes to do it. So now that the new owner has it, I'm excited to be a part of the build. It'll go really quick and it'll be a nice car to see back on the road again. Oh, uh, Pinocchi. Good, come yep. down. And then just try to go straight down. Okay, all right. Yeah, it'll probably scratch a little of the inner fenders. That's okay, we'll, we gotta redo the engine compartment and everything. Good, good. Pushing hard. It's good, solid. Beautiful. That engine was actually taken apart and rebuilt about 12 years ago. Uh, Darren had a uh, buddy of his build it that's a really good engine builder. And so it's been together and it's been ran a few times. I'd try to get him motivated to work on it and we'd fire it up and get it running and he would get excited for a day or two and that would be it. Uh, so it has been ran, it's never been driven. My guess is it has an hour, maybe two hours on it since it's been completely rebuilt. Everything went really well on the disassembly. Uh, it's kind of sad that Darren took 15 years to do what you saw, and we got it apart in about 45 minutes. But we're get, now that we've got it disassembled, we're gonna take the engine and transmission over, take those partially apart to see if there's any contaminants in them. It's a brand new engine, it's just been rebuilt, doesn't have any miles on it, but we'll need to disassemble it, clean it, and put it back together again. But overall, we did really well. Now that we have our 70 Challenger 444 speed off of the lift, I can bring the next car in and go over it with Alyssa doing the documentation and the ingesting of the vehicle. Our 400 Magnum still needs to have the final detail and assembly done on it so we can get it back in the car. And my daughter Alyssa commits a crime that may not be forgivable. It has been established that the unburied dead are coming back to life. They're coming to get you, Barbara. I would be doing this whether Alyssa was here or nobody was here because this is what I do as I inventory the cars. For me to be able to report back to the owner, yes, it's the numbers matching engine like you suspected. Yes, it's the numbers matching transmissions. Yes, this car has been wrecked here or no, it's not, or you misrepresented it. These are all the things that I need to know. And secondly, my insurance company needs to know. Hey, are you busy? Well, no, what are you up to? Okay, can you grab your notebook and a pen and come on down? I want to uh, inventory another car with you. Oh, yeah, that'd be awesome. I'll grab it. Hey. Hey. OK. Let's do, first off, see if you can get, now there may be bees. I just moved oh this thing God. in from outside. It's terrible. OK. This is an original, listen to me. Uh, uh, it's a wrapper. It's going to work out. It's what? OK. I don't know what it is. But, but it's or not why, the point. why it's in there? I don't even know why it's in there. Just... But you could get stung. And oh. if you'd like to go into prophylactic shock, you can. Well, I'm not allergic to bees, so. OK. Well, prophylactic shock doesn't exist. It's anaphylactic shock. <laughs> that was a play on words. I'm about to quit. We're like two minutes okay. into today. And... All right. What kind of car is this? Uh, can we just, I don't know, Dad. What is this? Honey, come on. You it's a GTX. Pull... OK, okay it's a GTX, because it says it right there on the it side, is. right? OK, what year is it? 72. No, your VIN's gonna tell you everything, so I want you to read the VIN. What's the first letter? R. That's the Plymouth lineup. What's the next one? S. That means it's a GTX. What's the next two? Two, three. That means it's a two-door hardtop. That means the back windows and the front windows both roll down. That's what a hardtop means. Okay. 21 is a post where the back windows don't roll down, but the front ones do. What's the, what's the fifth digit? L. That's a 375 horsepower Super Commando 440. Six character. Nine. That's the year of the car. What year is it? 
69? Yep. So write down your notes, 1969. What's the seventh character? Looks like a C, a G or C? A G. Okay. St. Louis. So the car, car was built, built in St. Louis, Missouri. Write all this down, right? Car was built in St. Louis, Missouri. It's got a 375 horsepower, 440 Super Commando engine. It's a true GTX according to the dash van. Our job is to make sure that the rest of the car matches that. Okay. All right. Pretty original old interior. You'll see a lot of mold. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, smell the mold. This car's too. out of Illinois. You can smell it. Mm -hmm. What do we have for seats in this car? Look like they're black vinyl. Black vinyl, and are they? Is that a bucket or bench? Bucket. Yeah. Okay. Code for that is C55, Charlie 55. Does it have a console or no console? Console. Console is what goes down the middle of them, that's correct. Is it an automatic or a four speed? Four speed? Take a good look, don't automatic. guess. Use your head. It's an automatic. Okay. Okay. If you look, if you look, first of all, that shifter is not gonna go into four gears plus reverse, okay? Look down at the pedal. You see one big brake pedal, and you don't see a clutch and a brake pedal. Yeah. That's an automatic. Okay? Okay. Tell me about the outside of this car. What color is it? Teal. Okay, let's go with that for now since we don't know for sure. Wheel opening molding, we know we're gonna end up replacing all those. But basically, looking down the side of the car, it's a it's pretty a darn complete car. This guy's dad bought this brand new in 1969. Another one? Uh huh. Wow, We've that's got about cool. a dozen of them here that they bought new, which is almost unheard of in today's world. I know, that's really cool. Yeah, I had a lot of fun working with my dad. It can also be kind of frustrating because there's so much to learn, so I'm just kind of drowned in knowledge sometimes, I feel like. My dad's just like throwing things out at me and expects me to remember for the first time, and everything is just so new to me. Everything on the cars I'm looking at for the first time. So it can be really hard. I feel like I'm walking into a test that I didn't study for. All right, okay, class dad, is you. dismissed. What's the alphanumeric code for a 1969 Plymouth GTX with a 440 in it? The engine designation letter. The letter in the VIN that tells you it's a 440 is? On this car? No, no. I don't know, God. L, L. Like L. Like lunatic. You just learned that a few minutes ago. She's getting there. She's doing a good job. I die. What engine displacement was not available on the 1970 Dodge Challenger RT model? Was it 383, 340, 446 pack? The answer coming up after the break. This incredible story becomes more ghastly with each report. So what engine displacement was not an option on the 1970 Dodge Challenger RT? The answer, 340. While you could get a 340 in a Dodge Challenger in 1970, and the outside of the car, as well as most of the interior, looked exactly like an RT, it did not come in an RT model. The 1970 Challenger with a 340 was referred to as the A66 package. The unburied dead are coming back to life. Now that our 69 Q5 GTX is inventoried and documented, I can cut Mike loose to get it disassembled, organized, and sent off to the dipper. Fall off there, you stupid piece of shit. Say something the going on. Come on. Mike and I are working on doing the final detailing and assembling of the 400 Magnum so we can get it prepped and ready to go back in our 72 Charger SE. The 72 Charger is not exactly an OEM car. The owner had some pieces and parts for the suspension powder coated, so we had to unpowder coat those and detail them. There are other things on the car that are not OEM, but these are at the owner's request. These are the pieces and the parts that he wanted on his car. All right, you want to uh, bring that over here? Yeah, let's do it now. It's just gonna get too heavy after a while. I mean, I can do my end, but you always should. Yeah, yeah, you should, uh, you definitely have that to worry about. Hang on, hang on. Gosh, boy, you're really strong, Mark. Is that the, some sumo thing, or what is it? Look at that. Michael Von Doodle.
Yeah, 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 yeah completely. Wait. Why are you doing that? Because you don't see anything. You're just walking I'm in. I'm walking it in, and you're just making it worse. Okay. There it goes. You walked right in, didn't you? I had it. But you just kept ramming it down. You want me to work off the ground? Yeah, that's what I wanted. I couldn't wait. N nothing excited me. I woke up this morning. Now see if those bolts were lined up. You we could put bolts in it. Or if you weren't too stupid to be able to just uh, twist it. Okay, yeah, let me hold like, this all day. Would you like me to let it down now? Or? Yes. Okay, tell me when and what you want. Ah. Thanks for ruining those bolts there, buddy. Putting it in there square would have been nice, but you didn't it, want to do that. Is it not square? That's going to make him happy. That's going to make my feller up north very, very happy. And he should be. Mike and Dave are doing the final provisions to be able to install the 400 Magnum in the SE Charger. While they're doing that, I'm gonna work with Alyssa on decoding our 69 440 GTX. So you've done enough of these now. I want you to start this one on your own. So you start with writing down the VIN mm -hmm. and then walk the car, inventory it, and tell me what's missing. We'll just start with that. I'm getting ready with our little book. These are little pocket books we get from Galen Govier. He's uh, been printing these for years, called Little White Books. Anyway, uh, it'll have information in it that'll tell you exactly what that VIN represents, what size engine it is based on the VIN, where the car was built based on the VIN. And I want her to start learning that more rather than me just coming out and rattling off, hey, this is a XXXXXXX. This way she can look it up and it'll mean more to her. I think it'll stay with her more. So as soon as she's done with a basic walk around, then we can do that. So the first one is gonna represent the car line, which is the Plymouth. Why is there a heart over the eye on Hemi? Hemi's a man thing. Hemi, Hemi is punch people in the face. Hemi is kick you in the nuts, and, and while you're going down, you sucker punch him in the chin. That's a Hemi. It's not a heart. Go on. So then the second digit is going to be the price class, which Would is you? medium. 2-1. What does that mean? Body type. And it's a two-door coupe. Two-door coupe. What's the difference between a two-door coupe and a two-door hardtop? We've done this several on times. On a hardtop, the back window rolls down, and on a coupe, it pops out. Very good. See, we're getting there. The next one's going to be engine. Which is what code? J. Okay, and what does a J represent? 1969, what does a J represent? Uh, 426 Hemi. What year was the car built? 69. Where was it built? St. Louis, Missouri. Very nice. So you decoded that all by yourself. That's awesome. Yep. That's awesome. Alyssa and I are just about done inventory in the 69 Hemi Roadrunner. A uh, few little things. I think that the owner thought the transmission was the original numbers matching, which it's not. It's not even close. Tell me what that VIN reads. 7C, yeah. right? There you go. 7C1950798. And that matches the transmission, right? The engine and transmission are out of a 1977 model full size Chrysler. Yep. And I don't know what assembly plant C is, but it's none of them that count. Now, the front, for some reason, is missing the, the torque boxes. Why would that be? There's no front torque boxes or, or subframe connectors that are mandatory on the Hemi car, so it could have been overlooked at the factory, kind of an interesting thing, because the rest of it sure looks right. Uh, the only thing we really have left is we had to take the seats out of it so we could get the trunk open because we couldn't find the keys. We're gonna check the body numbers on the trunk lip on the driver's side. If they all match, we can prepare our report and give the owner a call. I think things are going great working with my dad. I've learned how to decode the VIN all by myself. Um, definitely still need to use the book. There's a lot to learn, but I think I'm doing really good, and, and I think that Probably within a week or so, I'll be able to do the next car by myself. Because of the because obvious of the threat to untold threat numbers of citizens, citizens, this station will remain on the air day and night. Day and night. They're coming to get you, Barbara. I really love this car. This is one of my favorite cars that we've had in the shop. Sure, you ain't driving it. Have a nice day. I wonder if there's any way if I can get him to change his mind about letting me drive it. I have to appeal to his sweet tooth or caffeine. I think I'm gonna make him some coffee. Hello. Uh -oh. Made you coffee? Oh, thank you. That's You're awesome. You're welcome. White chocolate ice mocha. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Love those things. Do you need uh, anything else? Do you want any water or uh, nasal spray? Or... Oh, I get it. What? I get it. You're not driving the car. What do you mean? You don't do nice stuff like that for no I'm reason just, for me. You always keep I'm me down, hold me down. I'm just trying to make your day easier. No, no, so no. I'm just trying to help out, see if there's anything else I can do. It. No? No. So. Well, no, I remember what you've done to the last car. You're not going to try to get it. Have a good day, Dad. I'll have a great day knowing you're not out tearing up my brand new car. 
Have a nice trip, Mario. This incredible story becomes more ghastly with each report. The unburied dead are coming back to life. You want to come out and help? Sure. Maybe okay, I'm... grab a pin. 68 Charger RT, okay? So this is the one we're going to do right now. I am on a roll right now. We're getting rid of the document and inventory, our 1968 Dodge Charger RT, copper car, white interior. This is a 440 automatic, numbers matching one owner car. It's scheduled to get disassembled and dipped in the next two weeks, so I'm not going to wait till the last minute. Now is the time. Who are the owners? The owners are out of California. This guy bought this car brand new. I oh invented my this, God, Dad, this is, come on. This is my newest move. Pooping? How is that pooping? Do we work? Yeah, Alyssa is doing a good job. Overall, she's doing a great job. The thing is, is she needs to stay focused. She needs to learn the models of the cars, what to look for, what the distinguishable things are on these cars so she could tell the difference at a glance. What we want to do right now is verify it's what the owner says it is. A real 68 Charger RT, the color's the original color, the interior color's the original color, and all the numbers match. That's the way it's alleged to me, okay? Okay. So, a lot of information right here on this data plate right here. XS29, that's the first four characters of the VIN. You remember what S is? I don't. It's a special price class. It means it's the RT version of the charger, okay? Okay. So we know that the fender tag right there matches exactly the first four characters of a real RT. And here's your body codes. It's the XS mm -hmm. is Dodge Charger RT 68 to 70 only. So that would be your easiest way to be able to tell. So what's that VIN read? It's going to read XS29. I can tell you it stands for fast top. What does fast top mean? Fast top is the style of the body. See how this thing slopes off the back like this? Mm -hmm. That's the that's what they called this particular style of car was a fast top. See how the windows incest yeah. inset in it? Not incest. Inset. Yeah, not to be confused. <laughs> Your VIN code system is right here at the front of the book. Just a real quick thing. Go to 1968 passenger car. First digit is an X. Mm -hmm. Means it's a Dodge, right? S means special. Special means RT on these cars, okay? Okay. 29, two-door sports hardtop or fast top. Okay. Okay. The fifth digit of the VIN on this one should be an L. One four-barrel or two? One. They only made them with one four-barrel, okay? The eight represents the year, 1968. So the first thing we want to do is write down the full VIN number off the windshield. X, S, 29, two, Charger. Nine, mm -hmm. L. L, 440. Eight, eight, B, Amtramic, and then the sequence. Two, eight, five, nine, six, three. In 1969, the full VIN was on the fender tag. It matched the windshield. It matched the uh, trunk lip in the back, and it matched the radiator support. In 1968, they used the shipping order numbers on the radiator support and the trunk lip, and it only appears oh. to one section of this car right here. 68 and older, they didn't put the VINs on the radiator support. They put the shipping order number. Okay. The shipping order number is right here on the VIN tag. It's the last series of numbers right Zero, there. 077834. So this and this belong together. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Now, the question is, did somebody take this radiator support out of another car, cut it out, and weld it in here, put the two screws into it that make it look like it's an RT, and all of a sudden they've got an RT out of a 318 car? My guess is absolutely not, for one original owner. Number two is, you don't see like a shiny core support that just got put in around an old muddy car. When these cars were going to be built, they got assigned a shipping order number immediately. Okay. Then they got assigned a VIN number. So we know the core support, radiator support started life in this car, right? Yep. Okay. They hide the other body number underneath this weather strip. Oh. Nobody's had this weather strip up. You can see that's old and rusty. Ugh. So we're going to pull that first. Maybe you're taking some of the paint off, that's okay. Yeah, because we're going to restore the car. So tell me if those numbers match the last eight digits of the shipping order number. 077834. 077834. So we've established that all the body numbers match. The only things we have left to make sure of is the color codes for the car and a quick inventory of what's here and what's not, okay? The best example of an original color is inside the deck lid. Do you know why? Because it doesn't get faded from the sun. Right, exactly. It's kind of a reddish copper, right? Yeah. Okay, let's go look at the paint code. What are those three letters right M -M there? MM1. MM1. Turbine bronze metallic. The M is the code that you're looking for. Turbine bronze. That's probably turbine bronze. 
Let's look at the interior, the trim, the C6W. That's your trim code. That's gonna tell you if it's a premium interior or not a premium interior and what colors it is, okay? And it's also gonna tell you if it's bucket or bench. First letter C means it's a charger interior. That's good, because we got a charger, right? And then W will be for white, white with black trim. Make sure you have a white interior with some black trim. Dash is black. Dash is black, v steering looks, columns black, consoles black, looks carpets like the black. Looks in black. But the seats in the interior are white. 1968 only, transverse. That means it goes around the back of the car. Sport stripe, white. So it is coded for a bumblebee stripe. I'm really glad that everything on the car is as correct as the owner alleged it was when it got here. It's a one owner car, so it's nice to find out that there's no surprises. Educationally speaking, I can almost guarantee you that engine either started life in that car or it was put in within the first year. My guess is it's the original numbers matching engine, but until that engine's out on the ground and we can clean it, we can't be sure. Visual inspection is done on the outside of the car. We're gonna raise it up in the air and do a visual inspection of the underside of the car. It's a disc brake car. Ask him, did, I, did he order disc brakes? Did he want disc brakes? Because this is some of the first era stuff that get disc brakes on the Mopars. How you can tell if it's a sure grip rear end or a positive traction rear end, Chrysler calls it a sure grip, okay? Okay, how can you tell? When you spin the wheel, the other wheel goes the same direction. If this was a one-legger and it wasn't a sure grip, that wheel over there would go the opposite direction. So it does have a sure grip in it. Anyway, just looking visually, get your belt moldings, charger moldings, back glass, and reveal moldings, your flip top gas cap, which by the way, in 1970, red fuel in 68 was just plain like that. Engines in place, looks like, even, this is very original. Most of the time by now, somebody's yanked that air cleaner off of there, thrown it away and put a Mickey Mouse Chrome one on there. God. That one's still got the original one. It's got the original pad underneath the hood for the installation. Front bumper, grill, it's actually in good shape. Bumper needs to be re-chromed, but for the most part, everything is there and in shape. Uh, truth is, this is a really nice car. And when they're a nice car like this to start with, the finished product is gonna be even that much better. Okay, good that job. sounds good. I mean, fruit of my loin. No, God, how? Feet of my love. Why? True or false? In 1971, you could order a Dodge Challenger RT convertible with a 340. The answer coming up after the break. This incredible story becomes more ghastly with each report. So, true or false? In 1971, the Dodge Challenger RT convertible was available with a 340. The answer is false. Neither in 1970 in any model of the RT or in 71 could you get the 340 high performance small block engine. However, in 1972 with the rally package Challenger, the 340 was the standard engine. First eyewitness accounts of this grisly development came from people who were understandably frightened. Uh, right now we're getting ready to install the 400 Magnum four speed in the 1972 Dodge Charger SE. Um, everything's laid out, rounded up, detailed, to the best of our ability, there is some aftermarket parts on it, and uh, we're ready to go. This is the engine that had the failure with the oiling problem. Remember that? Yeah. The guy had left the galley plug out of the front. Yeah. Such a simple, simple little mistake ends up tearing an engine apart to make sure. But everything looked good inside, and uh, looked like the rest of the engine was built out right. So we just put it back together again and detailed it up. 72 corporate blue is the correct color, even though the Edelbrock high rise aluminum and the uh, Holly Demon carburetor, none of those are factory. Obviously, the chrome valve covers aren't factory, the headers aren't factory, the serpentine belt. But I will say, it's cool. It is cool. <laughs> it it looks look nice. Good. It looks For a group really of good. guys that have the most boring looking engines on the planet every day in our shop, it's kind of fun to have something flashy like it. And you like shiny things, so. Yeah, yeah. The 400's cool. I had a 400 and a 67 Dart I had, and I, I love the motor. It's a great motor, so it's good to see it. And it's really cool how we put the aftermarket oil pan and the Edelbrock intake and then painted it all blue to make it look factory. I really like the fact he did that, and uh, the serpentine system's cool. Mike did a fantastic job putting the motor together. It looks great. Oh, God. Oh, she's squeal. We're that. just going to put it in this car here, yeah. I think. <laughs> right. <but. laughs> One more? Yeah. Oh, boy, not much. Right there. Oh. You want to put it in this car? Okay, are you? Don't, don't be a. No, I'm not being it. You're being it. You're doing it. I ain't doing nothing. I'm just saying I Boss, want to line it up. What other car do you want to All right. put it in? Left or right? Well, I don't know. You keep saying go to the left. Well, I know right we're going to be in Bend installing it in a Vega. Let's let this thing down. I think you're getting pretty close.
now we got the uh, front end in place. The rear cam member bolts aren't in. I should have put the rear end in first. No, not a big deal, obviously. We're through it quick, but that helps balance the car out. So right now they're putting that in. This is just a simple uh, 323 sure grip, eight and three quarter rear end. Uh, the car is a 404 speed, so the guy did order it with the 323 sure grip, which is really cool. Here in a second, they'll have the rear end located in position. Then we can raise the car up in the air, put the rear K member bolts in it, button up the back end, and really all the suspension will be done at that time. All right, boss, ready for your plate there. Right there. Okay, can we go up? There's sockets over there if anybody's interested in tightening that side. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it can be tightened. I'm just thinking that right now we're ready to go up. Yeah. Tighten it once it gets up there. there. Yeah, go. Not too bad, going together pretty smooth. Because Mike's back there doing it. Mike's doing a good job. He always does a good job. All right, that one should be the driver's side. Uh, working with uh, Mike and Will, uh, we're a great team we, with Mark, and we just get it knocked out quick. Uh, working a graveyard car so far has been a blast. I, I just love it. Love my job. Everything went really well. Uh, we got the 400 Magnum and the 400 installed in the 1972 Dodge Charger. Uh, did an awesome job. Mike helped out. Um, Dave helped. Everything went really well. Will did a good job. Yeah. You're third. learning a little bit. I really wanted your hands. I mean, those two guys know how to do this. I want you to learn how. This is so, the third one I've done, so good. it's getting a little bit easier as we go. Next time, put those uh, spring hanger bolts in the right direction. But other than um, that, actually, they came that way. That had nothing to do with me. <laughs> From the factory? Well, whoever built it out. You're gonna put that. Sh stuff on me? No, I was just saying if you notice something like that, you should say something. Yeah, I didn't notice it because I don't have enough experience in it, but I didn't put him in. Fair enough. Oubli vous vous chez à c'est soi. Isn't that like a song? It's a music, yeah. Oh, is that all you know? Yeah, well, I don't know. I don't even know if those are the words, okay. but it sounds like oubli vous vous chez à c'est soi. Which I think is French for we should go get something to eat. That sounds good. You know, this is a nice little Roadrunner to start with. Uh, it's a great example of an older restoration that probably wasn't done by a Mopar expert, but that's why the owner sent it to us, was to get it done right. This is going to be a two-fold learning thing for you. So one is what cars shouldn't look like when they're done getting restored. And you, it's going to be another car that we inventory so we can have it on our insurance list so we can have it ready for the disassembly, which needs to happen right away. So first, what I want to do is just give it a quick wash, OK? OK. You remember well, how to I wash a do. car? Yeah. Yeah. Found something car. you can do, OK. Not intimidated about this task. All right, all right. Let's see just how. No, don't get crazy. Let's see what you remember I know the about first, washing I know the car. first. The one thing I remember is you soaking me every single time. If you ain't wet, you ain't working. Oh, my hair. Uh, right now, I'm getting ready to move the Roadrunner around. Uh, we'll do a visual inspection on the ground, then get raised up on the bin pack, do a visual underneath, check the numbers on it, validate it so I can communicate with the customer what we found. Uh, meanwhile, Alyssa apparently doesn't want any part of that, so she snuck off with the old excuse, I gotta take a whiz or a pee, whatever it is girls do, all right? I don't do that. I hold my bodily functions until the job is done. So if it's a 48 or a 72 hour job, I mean, you're, you're working with a time bomb. What are you doing? So I'm going to take the key for the Challenger out of my dad's office. Why? <laughs> so I asked my dad if I could drive the new Challenger that he got, and he said no. So I'm going to take it anyways and see, see how it goes. Because of the 
obvious threat to untold numbers of citizens, this station will remain on the air day and night. This incredible story becomes more ghastly with each report. So I asked my dad if I could drive the new Challenger that he got, and he said no. So I'm going to take it anyways and see, see how it goes. Plan? I really want to take the Challenger for a drive. And my dad said no. So, I mean, it's easier to say sorry later on you know, and ask for permission, one of those type of things. Okay, yeah. you haven't even got the gate open. Okay, well, go, come on. What? You gotta hurry. Okay, he always right here. It's a Hemi. He's right here? I know. Okay, he's right there. Okay, so. Where's Elisa? My darling daughter. I'm seriously so excited. Hey, don't <gasps> wreck it. Smells new. Come on, Will. Alyssa, it doesn't take that long to pee. Will, get in here with me. Come on. I don't want to go by myself. No, you're fine. Come on. No, just go. Will, I'll, I'll cover for uh, Will. Please. What are you going to say? What are you, how are you That you ran to the store real quick because it's 100 degrees. You're thirsty. You're such a buzzkill. No, there's sorry, a I'm door. Sorry, door. I'm not sorry. Okay, fine, fine. Fine. Okay. Woo! Ooh, I like that. Hello? Oh, excuse me. Are you peeing? She's not even in there. Where's Alyssa? She, she took off in your car. In my car? Oh, the, or the orange Challenger. No, she didn't. Yes, she did. She better not have drove it at all. She's in it down the street. The oh. car's got 697 miles on it. Okay, well. And I, she asked me the other day and I said, not on your life are you driving that car. She's out, that's what she's doing. We've see, we seen her pull out. Woo! Yeah. We have people that just want to go the speed limit. Will. Yeah. Did she drive my car? She is in the orange car. Why? I have no idea. Just go. Will, I'll, I'll cover for uh, Will. Please. Uh, what are you going to say? What are you going to That you ran to the store real quick because it's 100 degrees. You're thirsty. She asked me specifically the other day if she could drive it. And I go, it's got 697 miles on it. Nobody's driving it. I'm not driving it. It's been sitting. I didn't think about going back. That's a little scary of a thought. <laughs> but this is exciting. Hear that? Oh. Hey, you know and well I told you not to drive that car. I specifically told you not to drive that car yesterday. Well, we just went around the block, Dad. No, we're gonna take that up later. That's bull. She asked me and I said no. The car's got 697 miles, it's a one owner. Go steal somebody's new car and see how they react. They might not be real happy about it. Oh, do I have to go and face them right now? Maybe later? I don't know, can I go home for the day? I was really shocked at how upset my dad was. I mean, I can understand a little bit that, you know, he didn't know I was driving the car, but I felt like he could be more understanding at the fact that I work around these really awesome vehicles all the time and a lot of times they're not you know, drivable for a long period of time. And here's a car out there that's beautiful, really nice and brand new. And of course I couldn't you know, go without driving it while I was here. Dad, I just, you know, who wouldn't want to drive a cool car? You asked me and I told you no. I don't understand why. I don't know. I just took it around the block. I'm mad. She defied my orders. She went behind my back. I don't even want to be around her right this minute. I think that'll last like two days and then he'll forget he was ever mad. It's gonna make for the re awkward rest of the work day. If it's just a straight line, it's gonna be an I and not a one, correct? It's gonna be a one, they don't use eyes. I noticed this decal right off the beginning. Is it on any other Plymouth cars? It's not a decal, it's an emblem. 
Grab a flashlight. I like, I drove the Cuda when it was done and I really didn't have anything to compare it to, right? And so I feel like driving like a new Challenger now, anytime I get an old Challenger, I actually have something to compare it to. Well, ooh, looks like I'm gonna really have to talk to him. I don't know what you think's so funny. I don't think anything's funny, Dad. You will never drive another car here ever again. <laughs> Whether it's a Mopar or Restoration. Why? Because that car doesn't anything. belong to you. That is not your car. I know, you but what is the big deal? Here. The car's got 600, and it's an 08. Okay. Got that. What yeah. year is it? 08. What year is it today? Really, Dad? What, I don't year, is like what year is it today? What year is it today? 2015? How many years old is that car? What? Get to your point. My point is it's made it eight years with 600 miles. Okay, so one now mile is like... Now you just put five like... more miles on it, driving it around with no insurance on it after I specifically told you not to drive it. Well, I didn't know it didn't have insurance. When I told you not to drive it, does that matter? I'm... Well, Dad, Do you think I had a not... reason, just being mean? It's irresponsible. Okay, Dad. I think you're being ridiculous. I think taking somebody's car without permission is ridiculous. It's not like I stole it, you're my dad. It's not your car, you don't drive okay. something that doesn't belong to you. What's the number of the VIN? So through all the awkwardness, I did end up getting some really good notes on the Roadrunner. Um, tomorrow I plan on starting a file for it and contacting the odoring, owner and getting some more information on it. But that's it. So that's our 70 Roadrunner, 383, four speed, numbers matching engine, non-numbers matching transmission, eight and three quarter, FY1 yellow with black guts. All right, I'll give the guys a green light to disassemble it then. Okay. And you just remember you're never allowed to drive another car here as long as you live. Okay, Dad. I'm pissed because she doesn't understand the gravity of it. You've got a car with 697 miles that even I am not driving to preserve the integrity of the vehicle. It's made it nearly 10 years with that few of a mile. That makes that car really a tangible prospect for a potential owner. The more miles you put on it, the less desirable it is. Also the fact that when I say no, it should be no. I didn't just say no because I want to keep somebody down or because I want to hurt her feelings. There was no insurance on the car on top of everything else. And the cars she has driven that were nice cars that we gave her as a teenager, she's destroyed every one. She's down to a 94 Crown Victoria. You know what I'm saying? Next time on Graveyard Cars, master of Mopar, Tony D'Agostino, comes out to assist Mark at the appraisal of two ultra-rare Mopars. And Mark shows off just a few of the cars that will be restored in the upcoming years on the next episode of Graveyard Cars.